The moon hung low in the ink-black sky, its dim light struggling to penetrate the thick canopy of trees that surrounded us. We stood at the edge of the forest, facing the enigmatic Shiryo Shrine, a place shrouded in local lore and dark secrets. My heart raced with a mixture of excitement and fear as I led my friends towards the eerie structure. You guys don't really believe all those ghost stories, do you? I asked, trying to sound confident, despite the unease creeping up my spine. Taro, the skeptic of our group, shrugged dismissively. It's all just superstition and local legends, Yuki. There's no such thing as vengeful spirits, Aya, the brave one, added with a chuckle. Exactly. We came all this way to explore, not to be scared away by ghost tales. Kenji, ever the observer, remained silent, his face illuminated by the soft glow of his flashlight. He was always the one who seemed to sense things others couldn't, and I could tell he had reservations about our little adventure. We crossed the creaking wooden bridge over the tranquil pond, and as I glanced at my reflection in the dark waters, a shiver ran down my spine. The stories echoed in my mind, tales of souls seeking revenge, trapped within the shrine's sacred grounds. Inside the shrine's courtyard, the aura was heavy, suffused with the smell of ancient incense and decay. The lanterns flickered, casting eerie shadows that seemed to dance along the walls. I could feel a million eyes watching us from the darkness, and a cold breeze whispered through the bamboo grove. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea, Taro said, glancing uneasily at the fading light outside. Oh, come on, don't tell me you're scared too, Aya teased him, trying to hide her own nervousness. I took the lead, my footsteps echoing through the empty halls as we ventured deeper into the shrine. Each step felt heavier, the air thicker, as if an invisible barrier separated us from the outside world. Symbols adorned the walls, and ancient paintings depicted scenes of sorrow and misery. Aya suddenly froze in her tracks. Did you hear that? We all fell silent, straining our ears. At first I couldn't make out anything but the distant hooting of an owl. But then I heard it too. A faint whisper, like the rustling of silk in the wind. Taro's skepticism wavered, and he glanced nervously at the others. Okay, that's weird. Maybe there's someone else in here. But as we continued, the whisper grew louder, becoming a mournful wail that sent shivers down my spine. I clutched my flashlight tighter, trying to shake off the feeling that we were not alone. And then, it happened. In the dim light, I saw a figure materialize before us, shrouded in darkness. Its eyes glowed with an ominous crimson hue, and a chilling aura surrounded it, freezing the air around us. Aya gasped, and Kenji's face paled. I wanted to run, to escape this nightmare but my body felt rooted to the spot, unable to move. The apparition glided closer, its presence suffocating. The legends came rushing back to me, the vengeful spirit of a samurai, trapped in the shrine for centuries, seeking retribution for a cruel fate. We should have listened, Taro muttered, his voice barely a whisper. Aya tried to reason with the ghost, her voice shaking. We meant no harm. We didn't know the shrine was sacred. But the spirit's rage knew no bounds. It unleashed a haunting wail that reverberated through the halls, drowning out our cries for mercy. I felt tears welling up in my eyes, not knowing if we would ever leave this place. Kenji, ever the researcher, suddenly remembered something he had read about a forgotten grave outside the shrine, a soul seeking justice. He rushed back to the gravestone, holding up the shrine's last flickering candle to reveal faint inscriptions. The word spoke of an innocent victim seeking revenge on the cruel samurai. Maybe it wants justice for the forgotten soul, Kenji suggested, his voice trembling. With nothing to lose, we placed offerings before the vengeful spirit. We pleaded for forgiveness. The wailing intensified, but we refused to back down. Please, let them find peace, I implored, my voice hoarse with desperation. To our astonishment, the spirit's eyes softened, and the oppressive aura began to fade. The apparition let out one final wail, releasing the innocent soul it had held captive for so long. As the spirit vanished, the shrine's doors swung open, and a rush of cool air greeted us. We stumbled outside, our bodies exhausted and minds overwhelmed by what we had just experienced. We knew we had delved into the heart of Japanese horror, and though we left the shrine physically unharmed, its haunting memory would forever be etched in our souls. Shiryo Shrine stood there, its dark secrets intact, waiting for the next curious souls to dare explore its chilling embrace. Months had passed since our unpleasant experience at Shiryo Altar, 
Yet the recollections of that evening kept on tormenting us. Our gathering had become far off, every one of us adapting to the injury in our own particular manner. I, Yuki, made an honest effort to cover the experience profound inside, keeping away from any notice of the altar, as though imagining it didn't exist would make everything disappear. However, destiny had different plans. One night, while perusing old articles about nearby legends, Kenji coincidentally found an old parchment containing a failed-to-remember story of lost spirits and an old custom. It discussed a method for breaking the revile that bound spirits to Shiryo Holy Place. The custom required a group of courageous people, limited by a common encounter, to return to the sanctuary and set things right. Despite my underlying hesitance, the recollections of our common trial burdened my heart. I was unable to bear the possibility of those caught spirits enduring for eternity. Thus, with reluctant assurance, I contacted Taro and Aya, requesting that they meet me at Kenji's condo. Sitting in a faintly lit room, Kenji unfurled the parchment, uncovering its matured, delicate material. As per this, in the event that we can find and return the lost artifact that once had a place with the samurai, we could possibly free the spirits. Aya raised an eyebrow. All in all, we simply return to the sanctum and track down this artifact? That sounds excessively simple. Kenji gestured. It will not be simple. The sanctuary has changed since our last visit. Its emanation is more grounded and the spirits more anxious. However, we need to attempt. Taro folded his arms, examining what is going on. Okay, I'm in. We should try it out. With a common purpose, we got back to Shiryo Holy Place on a twilight evening, adhering to the old parchment's guidelines. The hallowed place felt considerably more foreboding than previously, as though it detected our return and objected to our central goal. As we ventured through the Tori door, a chilly whirlwind invited us, and a far-off wolf's cry reverberated through the woods. Dread held my heart, however I realized I must areas of strength for be the others. The place of worship's patio felt like an extraordinary domain, washed in a frightful shine. We continued carefully our electric lamps uncovering images that appeared to wake up in the dim light. Yet again with fear we entered the principal corridor, and as we ventured inside the entryway shut behind us, fixing our destiny. The air developed thick with pressure, and shadows moved on the walls. We really want to track down the artifact, Taro said, still up in the air. However I could detect his hidden trepidation. We split up to look through the holy place's chambers, each step repeating like a frightful reverberation of our past. The altar appeared to wake up, its very walls murmuring insider facts of neglected distress. In a faintly lit chamber, Kenji found a secret compartment underneath a rotted wood plank. Inside lay an old katana, its edge enhanced with exquisite inscriptions. A sensation of association washed over me as I looked at the artifact, as though it held a piece of the samurai's grievous story. As we assembled around, the room became colder, and a forlorn cry reverberated through the lobbies. Yet again the vindictive soul appeared before us, its red eyes focused on the katana in Kenji's grasp. Is that what you look for? I asked the soul, my voice shuddering. The vindictive phantom transmitted a troubled cry, and out of nowhere it turned out to be clear. The soul was the samurai, looking for his lost belonging to discover a genuine sense of harmony in life following death. We tracked down it, Kenji expressed, holding out the katana. Take it! May it award you the rest you look for. The soul's eyes relaxed, and briefly, we saw a flicker of appreciation. The katana vanished from Kenji's hands, and the sanctum's abusive emanation started to lift. As the soul evaporated into the evening, we felt a feeling of conclusion, as though we had at last fixed something. Yet again the place of worship's entryways opened up, and we ventured outside, liberated from its malicious handle. As we left Shiryo Sanctuary, I felt a recently discovered association with my companions. We had overcome our apprehensions together, faced the obscurity that spooky us, and in doing as such, we had fashioned a solid bond. However the sanctuary's revile had been lifted, its insider facts stayed covered inside its antiquated walls, trusting that the following inquisitive spirits will meander into its spooky hug. However, we wouldn't be those spirits, for we had confronted the detestations of the past and arose more grounded with a mutual perspective of the force of companionship and the reverberations of the failed to remember that weight in the shadows.